Greetings, everybody. Um, now we're going to look at some pictures of what you may see uh, on your speculum examination when you have a patient with discharge from the vagina. Now, this is normal vaginal discharge, and it's kind of tough to see here, but you're going to have normally in the vagina a mucusy like discharge. It is not copious, uh, so this is just something that you may see if you're doing a speculum exam for another reason, um, like a pap smear, for instance. This is actually quite a bit of discharge, but it is normal. So what I want to point out here is that if you're doing a, a pap smear or you're doing a speculum exam for some other reason and you see something like this, it is not abnormal. Okay, so unless the patient is complaining of symptoms like itching and burning, or they say, you know, my vagina is smelling a little different than usual, my underwear smells a little different than usual, then you need to do a workup. But if they just have a little bit of discharge that you notice, incidentally, you don't need to do a workup for this because some vaginal discharge is normal. Now with trichomoniasis, um, you tend to see this frothy, it may be described to you as frothy, or it may be described to you as grayish green. You get a little bit of a different color. Notice here that this is a very white looking discharge, and this is normal. It's white, it's kind of mucusy. Here you get this kind of grayish green frothy discharge. Notice how the color is a little bit different. It's kind of a, almost a yellowish green. The color will vary, it's not perfect. You're never going to make a diagnosis of, you know, whether it's yeast or trichomonas or uh, BV. You're not going to make that diagnosis based on the color alone, but it can give you a hint. This one is, again, kind of frothy here. You see that bubble, uh, you know, those bubbles there. Um, this is a little bit less um, obvious based on the color. Uh, sometimes you may see some inflammation around the cervix, but uh, again, you can't always rely on it. All right, so maybe a little bit of uh, inflammation here, but it's very variable. Um, again, so here, this is a little bit less obvious, but you see that, again, that frothy-like appearance. Now, this is the strawberry cervix, and this is fairly specific for trichomoniasis. So you see these little punctate-like lesions, and they'll be surrounding the cervix. Here's the cervical os right here. Now, with candidal vaginiasis, this is typically described as cottage cheese-like or curdy. Um, this is something, you know, when you're just looking at it, it's kind of hard to, to tell. But when if you go in uh, with, you know, a forceps or something, um, you know, where you're able to manipulate the or even, you know, just your, your cotton tip applicator, um, you'll be able to tell just based on the thickness. This is a much thicker, uh, again, cottage cheese like curdy discharge. So, you know, even though this kind of looks similar here, well, you know, this is just thicker. It, it, it kind of adheres to the wall a little bit more. Um, and again, you're going to see a little bit of inflammation here because remember, this is a vaginitis, not a vaginosis. So you can see this is kind of thick here, but you can get a little bit of pooling um, in the uh, vaginal floor. Now with BV, um, it's you're not going to see inflammation around the cervix or anywhere in the vagina for that matter. Um, you will get this sort of whitish dis discharge. So this is it can have a frothy like appearance, but um, it, uh, it it tends to be white, whereas you get more of a yellowish greenish tinge with uh, with the trichomoniasis. It can be very scant. So the discharge, there might not be much, but the woman will tell you it stinks. And now this finally is cervicitis. So this is not a bacterial vaginitis, um, or sorry, bacterial vaginosis. This is not trichomoniasis or a yeast infection. This is cervicitis. So what you will have here is a patient that says, 
you know, I've got some soreness, I've got some burning, I've got some irritation. You're not going to see so much discharge as you're going to see redness and swelling around the cervix. When you see cervicitis, you should still get a wet mount and a KOH prep because, you know, sometimes the discharge is not going to be as copious. Uh, however, what you will have is no clue cells, you'll have no uh, hyphae or yeast, and uh, you will have a negative whiff test, uh, but you may have a positive chlamydia or a positive gonorrhea. Um, so this is, again, why we always do those NAATs. Uh, because this could be a chlamydial or gonococcal infection. We want to make sure that we are diagnosing that because not only is she infectious, uh, but if this is not treated, she could go on to develop pelvic inflammatory disease, which is a complication of untreated cervicitis. It can uh, ascend into the uterus, into the fallopian tubes. She can develop adhesions, raises the risk of, of an ectopic pregnancy or of infertility. So it's very important that you catch on to this.